Welcome back to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I have one of my and Jack. Oh, if y'all only knew what we go through when we get ready for these sessions, my goodness. How you guys doing today, man? Doing Copa City. You feeling good, man? Well, I just want to I, I want to clear the record. You know, it's been a little while since we've been on this session. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. I told you I was going to get you, brother. I was going to get you. Uh, I think Ben had to go to emergency care or something to get these knots to get off his head because uh, in our competition of fantasy football, we kind of gave him a little working over, and uh, we had to give him time to recover. So you recovered now, Ben? Yes, sir, I am. I am. Okay, good, good. Well, that's good to hear, man. Well, really, it's been a while since we've been on, man. I miss you, brothers. Uh, we got a lot to talk about, and uh, we might as well let's let's get off into the, the game that was uh, on the reservation between Curry View and Alcorn. What, what was you guys' feedback from that game? It had some highs and some lows, but thank God I'm on the hot side. I know that's right. I know that's right. What about you, Jack? Yeah, I, I like the fight that Prairie View is, um, is showing these past weeks. I mean, we came back from, you know, 17-point deficit against TSU and then uh, also came back from being down against Alcorn and, uh, you know, some good uh, special teams with the, with the field goal kicking. Walk-off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Walk-offs it was. And uh, hopefully... Uh, I'll take a walk off. I'll take a blowout. I just want to win this coming weekend from the State Fair Classic. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, ben, what you got on your mind this week, my man? Well, you talking about the State Fair Classic? I'm uh, packing now. I can't wait to get my turkey leg and my corny dog. So uh, <laughs> that's all I can think of right now: the turkey leg and the corny dog. A turkey leg and a corny dog. Which one are you gonna get first, man? Uh, whichever line is the shortest, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's almost somewhat of a homecoming for you and Jack uh, being in that Dallas area. I know you're from Fort Worth. And what exactly, what is it, 30 some odd miles or 20 some odd miles from Fort Worth to Dallas? I think uh, it's exactly, I think it's 40. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, about four. Yeah, so it's all in the neighborhood. And, you know, a lot of people from outside of Texas, they think that Houston and Dallas is like uh, across the street. <laughs> but mm-hmm. but they, they don't realize. But it's a, it's a road trip, but it's a fun trip for everyone. And before we get into it, do you guys have any special uh, State Fair memories, uh, either game-related or just experience-related, uh, from your days on the yard? Well, you know, uh, prior to the yard, I would say a memory that I'll hold um, true. I remember uh, shaking hands with Eddie Robertson. Um, my dad, <clears throat> dad mother took me to the PV game. Um, that was back when PV was uh, the floor mat. But um, an excitement was I saw Eddie Robertson. I was like, Eddie, there go Eddie. And he like, Speaking, I'm talking about him because his name was Eddie. But I uh, I ran over and shook his hand, and when I came back, my dad said, "That's good, but don't you ever run away from me again." <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, I remember shaking the man's hand, so that was a, a memory that I always hold and cherish. Okay, what about you, Jack? Um, don't really have too many uh, memories to go by, but I do recall this is after after graduating from Prairie View. Uh, just taking the, the kids to the state fair and how excited they were and then like the uh, little car show that they have seeing all the different uh, exotic cars or the latest cars out there so just a good moment taking the kids to to the fair okay okay well with all that being established any uh uh, conference news that you guys want to mull over from the week that passed or maybe that you heard this week uh, before we go into these uh, round off sessions of who's going to do what this week? Um, the only news I know of is I think the news out of uh, Alabama State um, uh, is that Coach Eddie? Alabama State? 
Eddie, Eddie Robinson, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Coach Ed, uh, Junior Robinson, we'll call him Junior Robinson. Uh, <clears throat> I was glad to see that he kicked the football player off the, uh, off the team who I believe, uh, I think, assaulted the security guard this past weekend. I, I gave him A-plus for coaching. You know, you can't let some player uh, demean your program by acting stupid. So I thought that was, you know, in order. And then the last thing is, um, it's interesting down here in Houston, this issue going on with uh, Texas Southern, to see what body is going to do. You know, some people are saying that he's becoming a distraction and, Others are saying that, you know, people are leaking out stuff. But whatever the situation is, make a decision and move on. Um, I know some people say that they are <clears throat> they wish you would come to Prairie View, but my thought is we got enough injuries here at PV. We don't need no more injury players. So uh, that's the luck one, but we don't need you at PV. Okay, so you're thinking, well, you said others are saying that body has been a distraction. And how do you figure that that's the case? from whatever you gather? Well, I think just the idea of however the, the conversation came up, um, they're already losing. I think this weekend is their homecoming. And um, Lord forbid, what's the man's name, T.C.? Is that his name, T.C.? Oh, you talking about the head coach? No, yeah. no, McKinley. Clarence McKinley. Oh, Clarence. Okay, well, <clears throat> if Clarence lose this game, man, they might call him a lot of other names. So uh, right now he needs to be focused on homecoming. Uh, so. Well, I'm I'm not really a gambling man, but if they lose this weekend to Lincoln out of California, they have to shut the whole football program down for Texas Southern from for history. That, that, there's no way they're going to lose this weekend. That's well, I, absolutely. I <clears throat> right now, it's a lot. I, and I don't on. care. I don't care who who's quarterbacking. There's absolutely no way they're going to lose that. One. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see next week if you have to swallow that statement or not. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, and I have no problem swallowing that one whole, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, as regards to body, uh, it's, this is extending back to an injury that he uh, received last season. And he had surgery. It's on his shoulder. That's no secret. Uh, he played against Prairie View, but during there were reports stating that even in preparing for the season opener, that he didn't look quite right as far as his throwing and uh, being able to get the touch that he once upon a time had. And others were wondering where was he rushing the case. But um, the thing about with this uh, four game. Uh, that you can play limit, and then, you know, whether it's a freshman red shirt or an injury red shirt, he has not exceeded that. And the speculation is he might go ahead and declare a medical red shirt, and he might just stay and continue to rehab. And there is a possibility that he could hit the transfer portal and then there's also another strong possibility that he'll stay there and get totally healed before he tries to come back and see any action. Hmm. <clears throat> well, from the uh, number one fan, <clears throat> if anybody is going to come to TV, I would take the coach and um, maybe make some type of special arrangement so he can put him as a Houston recruiter so he can recruit some of the young guys from Houston to TV. Uh, but right now, I don't think we need a body. We got enough bodies at PE. Okay, Jack, what's your feel on this, sir? Is Jack still with us? You know what? I'm, I'm not for sure. You remember you put him in the doghouse, so he might be um, in the doghouse. Right? Well, he put he put himself in the doghouse. You know, I don't put you in the doghouse. You put yourself in the doghouse. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, I guess Jack is still chained up. So we're going to move on down the road. And if he uh, whispers or, or shakes himself loose, I guess we'll continue on with the journey. Um, yeah. we do you want to go into your poll, or you want to go through the through the games let's, first? Uh, let's, let's do the picks first. Okay, okay. What you so got going on? What you got going on? Right. 
Week four? Week four. Oh, uh, no. Four. Is it week four? Yeah, that's right, because week zero. Five. Go ahead. Yes, sir. It's week five, but it's actually, you know, when you count that week zero, it's the fifth yeah. game, but it's the fourth week. So, yeah, it's, college is confusing like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, we got Tuskegee coming on down to Alabama and the Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to pick uh, – this is a hard one. I'm going to pick Alabama and him. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be in agreement with you on that one. Okay. Um, actually, um, I, I think I'm going to okay, go uh, to Tuskegee. Uh, I'm going to go to Tuskegee. They're 4 0, and I think they have a little momentum on their side. Uh, give me Tuskegee. Okay. Well, it's glad to hear that you pop back in, Casper, the friendly okay. ghost. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Did I miss a, did I miss uh-huh. a game? No, you no, didn't no, miss a game. Was... You came in right on time. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah, you, you went to get the get some water, so you came right in the sun. So the next one mm-hmm. is, uh, we were just talking about Texas Southern. Uh, I believe they're the first team in the SWAC to have their homecoming this year. So this game will be uh, on campus at Texas Southern. So um, I want to pick Lincoln, but I'm gonna say Texas Southern. I'm gonna pick them just because my wife went Texas Southern. Oh, I mean, but I mean, if you want to pick Lincoln, by all means, please do. Oh, no, no, because I remember, you know, giving games away last year to you, and you took advantage of that, so no, we won't be doing that this year. Oh, so, okay. Um, well, I, okay. I got you. I got you. Well, I'm, I told you, I, I, I got Texas Southern all the way in this, and if Texas Southern does not win by 30, I'll be thoroughly disappointed. 30? 30. Okay, all right. I guess this team must be a junior, uh, junior college team or something. If Texas Southern does not win by 30 points, I will be thoroughly disappointed. Okay. All right. Yeah. You understand what I'm in agreement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, if they don't win by 30, you're going to be thoroughly disappointed? Okay. I hear you. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Carry on. Texas, uh, Texas Southern comes off this night, this week, in an easy uh, home homecoming win against Lincoln. Okay. Now, this is a game that I'm, I'm with. I'm going to do this one last, or next to last. I'm going to skip that one. So we got Corn, and Corn right now is, I don't know what's going on. The, the corn fields are just dried up, apparently, now. So we got Corn playing mm. against Alabama State. At Alabama State. Ooh, yeah. And I'm going against Alabama. I'm going with Alabama State. Holy cow. Um, I'm going to pick all corn. I'm going to pick all okay. corn. All right. And pick all corn. Yeah. I think they're going to rebound. I also think all corn is going to rebound off a tough, tough loss. Uh, I, I believe the Braves are going to pull it through. On the road. Would you say that uh, Coach McNair, which I like, uh, that the uh, the gas or the electric stove has been turned on? Nah, I wouldn't say that. But what I would say is this: um, I believe that McNair might be due up for a change of scenery, and not at Alcorn's expense, but at his expense. That. Uh, I know he loves Alcorn as his home, and he's got a legacy there family-wise. But sometimes a change of scenery is good. Um, He has canceled his uh, weekly talk show that he had had for years. He's no longer doing that. Um, He was a bit animated at the post-game juncture last week in the loss against Perry. I've never heard him in that manner and I just think he might get a, need a little break if you would but not necessarily being fired I could possibly see that whenever his extension is done that he seek employment elsewhere yeah I always kind of like McNair I thought he uh coach McNair I always thought he and the um um the coach now at Norfolk State that they were pretty good gentlemen um, so mm-hmm. I was kind of 
a good um, a theme. Uh, I could see he coming to TV also and just being uh, someone on the staff, but I don't know if he would be willing to step down and take a staff role. That's what I'm thinking right now. Well, well, if you you say it's okay for Clarence McKinney to step down, and you don't think uh, McNair will be a step down, and then the next question is that was, what makes you think people will want to step down to come and be a part of PV? Well, no, no I, I, uh, again, it was more wishful thinking for me. Um, oh, again, okay, wishful thinking, okay. Yeah, wishful thinking for me. As far as the guy at Texas Southern, I'm only referencing him because they say he's a good uh, recruiter and he knows Houston, so that's the purpose why behind that one. I'm not even by far trying to put him in McNair's category because I don't think he's in McNair's category right now. I was thinking more just from a recruiting standpoint, um, that would be a plus for Coach uh, Bubblegum. That's what I was thinking. Um, okay, okay. The next one uh, uh, is the Rattlers going to uh, Valley. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Sam, you, I'm just going to just throw mine out there. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't even, well, yeah, yeah, fam, you. I'll just keep yeah. it going. Sit, sit across. Uh, yeah. Fam, you. Okay. And then this is the one right here. Oh, my God. Uh, Gucci, you now, are traveling to Arkansas Pound. And I'm looking at Gucci, and they don't look too good. But Pine Bluff, they did. They were competitive this past week. Um, and if they put up 28 points, I don't know if Gucci and them can do that. So I'm going with Pine Bluff. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Plus, that, that would help PV for sure. No I'm doubt about it. Um, it would help PV, but it would help PV even more if they handle Southern head up. So, and with that being said, I'm looking at uh, Southern's, their backs were against the wall last week and they responded quite well. Uh, well, not last week, but you know, before the buy. Right. Well, whatever the case may be. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that they've had a time to do some, some adjustments and I think the Jags are going to pull it off. I think the Jags are going to find a way to win. Okay, you going with Gucci. Okay. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, you know what? If you're going to give 30 points in Texas Southern, I give up four points. And I, and I will see it take Arkansas Pine Brook. Okay, so you would take Arkansas plus the four. I'll give four points. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to get. I, I ain't doing no bet. I ain't I'll doing no lines. <laughs> no, I ain't no, doing no. no lines or bet. But I'm just saying, I Southern will find a way to be victorious against the Golden Lions. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement with Dr. Prince. Uh, Southern could uh, go on the road and uh, bounce back from having a week off and uh, time to to mull over. Uh, things they need to uh, to fix in the program. Hey, Jack, it so, sounds like we're going up against a long shot if you're talking lines and all that so, kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And so, Chris, you know, you've been from, you know, that long Missouri state. How far is uh, um, Baton Rouge estimating to Arkansas Pine Bluff? It's about a four-hour Oh, it is? Drive four to, yeah, about a four to five hour drive, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I it's not. Longer. See, the thing about the thing about that belt of Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, they kind of like kissing cousins. So they're oh. not really far from each other. Uh, so it won't be an, an uh, extraordinary travel, but it'll be decent enough, you know, where they, they, they'll come in there. But I don't think travel is going to matter in this one. They're going to be re- well rested and ready to take care of business. Okay, all right. And so then the last game, um, as I prepare to leave, is uh, TV against the G-Men. So I'm going with TV. So I'm, I'm going to just write my 
Boy, I, I think that's going to be a clean sweep one this week. He said yeah, number the one momentum, fan for you. The, the, momentum, the momentum continues at the Safer Classic. Uh, right. Panthers I don't see this being a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, we're all picking PV. I'm, I have no doubt in I this week. But I do think... Oh, I understand. But I do believe it's going to be a very entertaining game, a uh, competitive game, uh, because we cannot deny uh, that Gramlin's offense has appeared to come alive. And so they are going to put up some points. But if you look at this past defensive performance that the Panthers put up, Boy, they're going to be up for the test. They, they, it, man, they, they look beautiful. And I was talking with the coaching staff, uh, the offense coordinator, defense coordinator, and Coach Bubba McDowell, and they all were in agreement that that second half of football was the best complimentary football that they've played since that whole staff has been together. And if they can continue that, man, it's going to be tough to try to tame them Tigers. I'm sorry, the well, Panthers. Yeah, I understand. So I'm thinking if the 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 back that they had at corn, he's bigger, stronger than the back that they have at ground. So if they lay that same okay. wood that they did last week, I'm believing that if I'm not mistaken, Prairie View won last year by a double digit number, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm believing that I won't be disappointed. I'm believing that by the time I come back to Houston, that Southern would have lost and Prairie View would have beat Grambling and we'll be dancing for homecoming. Okay. That's my point. I hope you're right. I, I hope you're right. Uh, I don't care if Prairie View wins by a sneeze. I just want to win. And I'm not going to worry about Southern until I have to deal with Southern here. But how would that look? I'm just saying now. If Prairie View had beaten Texas Southern, Corn, Gramlin, and to know that Texas Southern has a loss, Gramlin has a loss, um, Southern has a loss, and Corn has a loss, wouldn't that be lovely? It would be lovely, but it won't ma- but it won't matter if you cannot beat Southern head to head. You must beat Southern head to head. Here's why I say that. If you beat Gramlin, you lose to Southern. Southern beats Gramlin at the Bayou Classic, you still wanna be in second place because you didn't take care of business with Southern. If you lose to Gramlin, Okay, and you beat Southern, you still have a chance of being on top. Okay, even if Gramlin uh, uh, loses or wins, because it'll go by points. But regardless of what it is, you've got to beat the Jags. There is no way around it. The well, West like up- goes through Baton Rouge. I don't believe it, but um, I'm going to go with like Bubblegum said. We're going to take it one week at a time, and if Prairie View can be 3-0 and in the West and other teams can be 1 in whatever their record is, I think you go through Prairie View. I don't think you go through um, Baton Rouge, Mississippi, uh, whatever you, you, you want. You, you misinterpret what I just said, sir. What I said, I in order for the Pan- I said the Panthers must – take care of business and bad news for for the Panthers to win the West. All this wishful thinking is nice. Sounds good. It's even fun to talk about. But they've got to take care of Sup. Now, if we, if we recall at the start of the season, I said that the two Achilles heels for the Panthers for the past few years have been Alcorn and Southern. We've gotten past hurdle one. Okay. Grambling is a much improved team, okay? Let's not lose focus on them because we did good against Alcorn. Stay on course, but you still have to take care of Southern. And another thing, we cannot let 
Valley come back and bite us like they've done in the past. Because for the past two consecutive seasons, Valley was the only thing in our way from winning the West, and we couldn't close the door. Yeah, well, well like I said, I didn't talk about Valley. Um, truth be told, right now, the team I think I'm somewhat concerned about, uh, it's not Southern, um, but after I saw the battle that they put up, Arkansas Palm Bluff at home is going to be an interesting game for homecoming. But right now, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just happy to know that we're, we're going to be 3 you know, in the West. And other teams from Mississippi to Louisiana are going to be looking up. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. And as far as Valley, I ain't worried about that. We're going to win Valley this year. From From Okay. If I about to bubble some bubble yarn to give the uh, the coach bubbles, we going to win this year. Okay. I guarantee you. I guarantee. All right. I, I I hope it comes to pass. I really do. I really do. But, you know, being from Missouri, you got to show me. Yeah, yeah. And talking about it, talking about it. Yeah, talking about it is nice, and it moves a needle. It gets the chuckles. But when the dust settles, you got to show me what you're talking about. Well, Coach and I'm not lacking confidence. Well, Coach Bubblegum, uh, I don't want to be over religious, but for me and my family, we'll be heading 45 North pretty soon. So um, I'll be supporting him. <laughs> so who you rooting for? My family say she's you. You. <laughs> there, he has a way of trying to cre- create these degrees of separation that. He is the ultimate Panther fan that Jack and I are like chicken scratch. And I guess everybody else there from PV Nation is chicken scratch. But that's okay. We're going to love on you anyhow. You know. Uh-huh. And yep. that's, yeah, you can do it. Go back and listen to the tape, the, the tape fans. Y'all heard what they said. Uh, old Percy V been holding it down. So don't we don't need him now. Cheer on. Cheer okay. on. Uh, he said cheer on. Cheer on. Well, yeah. we, hey, uh, Jack, we're glad that Percy V uh, came with a confession before our session today, though, on <laughs> So you keep on cheering, Percy V. We got your back, bro. We got your back. We got your back. We got your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. With that being said, <laughs> with that being said, sir, uh, can we get your top ten poll, please, sir? All right. We're oh gonna my God. Here are Percy V's top ten polls of Black College football. So I have North Carolina Central in the number one spot. They're three and one. I have the Rattlers of Florida A&M in the number two spot. They're three and one. Um, I have Jackson State at the number three spot. They're three and two. I have Tennessee State. They're at number four. They're two and one. I have Prairie at the number five point after that big win last week. They're at two and two. I have Hampton at number six. They're two and one. I have Howard University at one and two. And then I have um, Norfolk State at number eight. They're two and two. And I have a tie um, um, with number nine, but one of them, I believe, is going to fall out come this weekend. So I have Alabama State, I mean, Alabama A&M at number nine, tied with Grambling at number nine at two and two. So that is Percy V's uh, top black college hit. Okay. Okay, interesting choice. Um, any comments, gentlemen, before we wrap this week's session up? Well, one Mr. comment. Mr. in. Yeah, go ahead. If you're going to go to the game, one thing I learned by going to the State Fair Classic, just a little secret, if you can just hold on to your hunger pain, them old $20 turkey legs, they look really good after the game when they $5. Out. 
So just saying, if you can just hold on. <laughs> if you can just hold on. <laughs> my twenty dollar turkey leg. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, this if I recall, dude has food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I recall, uh, you you told me about that five dollar turkey leg, and I believe I bought two or three that you were supposed to bring to me, but you never did. Well, I probably. You know what I like? <laughs> he probably ate them in route. <laughs> old greedy <laughs> joker. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking forward to it. My uh, my family's looking forward to it. Um, this is that time of season that I'm able to go home and visit other family members and so i'm looking forward to that uh but i am looking for a win um anything mm-hmm. other than is not going to be acceptable i'll i'll be sad next week so i'm looking for a win um and if i'm not mistaken um correct me if i'm not mistaken this will be number six or seven in a row uh be seven if they win this one it'd be seven in a yeah. row so, uh, Seven is a powerful number, I've always been told. So um, It's a very spiritual number for sure. So I'm looking for a win. And um, also, I'm looking to see what uniform is Bubblegum going to put out there. Because in the past... Uh, I, got, I know what they're going to wear. Oh, I know what they're wearing. I do. Why? But I'm going to wait. wait to tell you. I'll tell you when we get off the air. I'll tell you when we get yeah, off the air. I know in the past they've had the white with the purple helmet. Or they've had the white with the uh, the gold helmet. Um, I would like them to wear a certain uniform, but the last time we wore it, we had an experience kind of like um, the Miami Dolphins against the Denver Broncos. So I don't want to. Oh, and what, what what uniform was that, sir? I don't even want to speak. It, sir. I'm gonna leave it alone. No, go ahead, uh, go ahead. I, I, I'm serious. I want to know. Um, you know, you are really on the. Uh, the, the color scheme of the university. They have this purple, uh-huh. I think the purple, I mean, the, um, the gold bottom with the purple top, the old colors. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think that's when they got, uh, I think that's when Gucci ran up, ran up in uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> so, uh, I like it, but based on the effects of what happened, I, I want to stay away from <laughs> so it. So you, you want to stay away from it. I got you. I got yeah. you. I got we you. We can practice. Let that be our practice uniform. Because we don't need that. I know that's right. I know that's yeah. right. Well. What I was going to say is uh, don't uh, don't forget to close out like you normally how you be able to listen to the game. Oh, no doubt. But you know what? I was just thinking while I was listening to you uh, uh, speak. Uh, with the glow about you know your family and the turkey mix and and this might seem a bit over sentimental but this stay fair classic is almost puts you like in a holiday spirit mood doesn't it for me yeah because i get to see my family so i'm out. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And i like this you know, start of the fall season yeah. yeah and you know the other part about it that makes you to me feel special is i'm sure the body plastic is, is like that in some respect but to see um, 50 plus thousand black people and they all having a good time and not no one is acting, acting a fool or whatever, that's a lovely image. Um, mm-hmm. To see the generations of, you know, now that I'm of age, but to see little bitty people and now my daughter is 13 and the different age groups, you know, that's a lovely picture. But um, I'm always just happy to see black people come together um, supporting and having a good time. Um, yeah. Well, you remind you remind me of a story. Um, uh, a lot of people don't realize that they have SWAT teams on the roof during these games and for the Red River uh, battle between Texas and Oklahoma. And uh, one year, I got a chance to uh, interact with these guys, and um, they were very complimentary of the Grambling and uh for if you fan base it's a man we like it when you guys play because we can actually watch the game he said because there's no fighting and no this that no no uh public uh lewdness or drunkenness he said but when oklahoma and texas get together it is like a riot from start to finish and i felt extremely Panther proud, HBCU proud, black proud, 
you know, I was like, man, that, that was cool to hear. And so it is a special time, okay, but it, like you said, it's even better. The turkey legs taste better. The corny dogs taste better with a victory under your belt. So with all that being said, I want everyone to travel safe, coming and going. Um, those who cannot be able to make it to the State Fair Classic, be sure to tune in to the Open Mic Broadcast Network at obnradio.com. There's a Listen Live link that you can click on and listen to the game from start to finish. You can also dial in at 857 777-00-00 and check out the game that way. It is a labor of love for us from the Open Mic Broadcast Network to present these games to you guys and also want to give you a chance to be a part of the support group. And we're asking those who can and will do a season pass for $18.76. And if you understand that $18.76 based on the founding year of our beloved Prairie View A&M University, with that season pass for the entire football season, we're not asking no more, that comes out to $1.71 per broadcast. And you can help us continue to bring these games and this coverage to our fan base abroad. We thank you guys so much for joining in. He has been... Jack and I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Don't forget, you can join me each and every day right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network with the Mike Prince Show. On Saturday mornings, we have The Zone, and we're going to give you a PV game near you real soon. So until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.